Oh, yes, yes, yes. Football card collecting and investing, baby. Andy is so excited because we're going to do some price data analysis on three players because we've got a very general question from uh, a viewer of the show. Hey, uh, what is the best time to buy and sell football cards? That's the number one question. And Andy did some really deep price data analysis charting for us on three different players, including the GOAT. So we're going to show you that in just a second. But right off the top, Andy, there is so much going on with football cards. The prices are still really hot, and the hobby is really on fire as we start to lead into this NFL draft. Man, it is on fire. It is on fire. We saw a huge spike this time last year, but we still don't have these new releases for 2021. We still don't have the Prism, the Select, the Optic. It's still not even been announced. No artist proofs. So this is just leading to appreciation, hype, excitement for what is out there for all these young guys. You know, historic NFL offseason with all these team changes, just blockbuster just mega, mega team changes, which is leading to a, a giant appreciation in values. Um, even just looking at football cards in the last month total, uh, over $125 million in sold items on eBay, according to VintageSportsCards.com. Uh, so we're seeing um, still a massive amount of sales volume in the hobby. So I want to talk about influencers, right? I've gotten a few questions from friends of mine Hey, Carter, I saw Drake doing this basketball card opening, and it probably would have been a bigger story if the same night Will Smith did not slap Chris Rock in the face. Uh, but th that night, what card people saw was Drake, along with Ken Golden, opening up a lot of very expensive basketball card boxes. And Andy and I were talking about this b before the episode. Who's to say that someone doesn't come along and start opening football boxes? And that's going to make people even more interested in the football cards. Now, once again, celebrities are doing really higher in, like unopening of the 86, you know, famous packs of Fleer and all that stuff. But the truth is, there are a lot of people interested in the football cards. You saw at the Mint Collective this last weekend, Peyton Mother freaking Manning. We're talking about, to me, one of the 10 best players to ever play the sport at any position is there at a sports card event. Uh, so once again, there is just a lot of momentum with football cards. We've seen this with uh, Trevor Lawrence, you know, doing all the sports card stuff and even more vintage guys uh, talking about football cards. It's a really good time to get into this hobby, Andy. It's changed your life. It's changed our life. That's why we launched this podcast. That's why you have your channel. So I get this question all the time, Andy. Do you think football cards are, are still a thing from the initial boom? Yeah, I do. I, I really do uh, in my heart of hearts believe that. Oh, absolutely, Carter. It, it's uh, it's continuing to grow, you know, continuing to um, see, you know, through, through a variety of different uh, vectors as well. We're talking, you know, new subscribers to the channel, new new patrons, part of the, the community that have seen some success that want to delve deeper into it and, and they want to accelerate their learning curve. Um, and then we see celebrities getting into it. And, and I like the the Drake thing, even on basketball cards, because you know that there's some, some kids out there watching it that are really excited about that. And they're like, yeah, but I'm super passionate about football. I love to play fantasy football. And they go and start getting into football cards as a result. Um, and, and there's the, it, you know, football is the, the largest uh, revenue generating sports league in the world a singular league and it's just one of uh, america's great pastimes and there's just there's so much so much news and coverage around it that it, it just i mean it's continuing to grow i absolutely agree with that 100 percent. yeah to the moon and that's why there are shows like this to help you grow your football card knowledge now the one thing andy about our friendship is that there are things that we get right there are things that we get wrong we've made both of those uh we've been on both ends of the spectrum trust me i spent over 150 dollars on a dwayne haskins card before shouldn't have done that but if i had resources such as the show and your channel and now this podcast i would have known better to do that so obviously uh that's our goal on this show it's to not only grow 
your knowledge, but our knowledge. We've learned so much from our patrons, football cards, patreon.com slash football cards, and just uh, in general hobby sources around uh, the world. It, it's so critical to talk about, Andy, when is the best time to buy and sell football cards? And what we want to do is, once again, some of you are listening to this just on audio. I highly recommend you go over to the YouTube channel and see this down the road because Andy has specific points of interest that uh, with these charts here that shows you a two-year sample of when to buy and sell football cards. And the guy we're going to start off here with Andy today is none other than my patron saint, Joe Burrow. So Andy, I'm going to let you take it away here uh, as far as what Joe Burrow cards have done. And we're looking here at a PSA 10 rated rookie Donruss. Yeah, you know, I've uh, got to love that the the LSU um, player love here. But Joe Burrow obviously has had a very interesting career thus far. And what I'm what, what we're looking at here is this 2020 base Donruss PSA 10. Now, this card was released at the beginning of September in 2020 when the sports card market was incredibly hot for virtually all top 300 active NFL players. And Joe Burrow being the 1.1 the draft pick from the 2020 draft had a ton of hype rookie season. All right. And you can see how high the chart was there around, that was around $400 for his PSA 10 based on his rated rookie. This card was brand new on the market. Um, it was very limited supply. You can see that those were hovering around that point. However, when Joe Burrow uh, suffered that season ending knee injury there. It was that like uh, November, early December timeframe, Carter. Right. You can see that post injury dip there down below $250, down to around $225. However, you can see as the season ended and we got into the postseason, what I call reflection period, also the start of the new league year start of free agency and building up into the NFL draft for 2021, we see an appreciation in Joe Burrow's card back up to where there was even a spike purchase that could have potentially been uh, a skewed. So we, even if we rule that one out, it got back up to uh, close to $300 and you can see it stayed elevated there pretty much until May, June of 2021. And this is very interesting because there was not even a um, an injury return timetable on Joe Burrow at that time, Carter. Right. Yeah. And people had seen enough of him up to that point, Andy, to say, well, we still believe in him. We still think he could do special things. But obviously, he took his game to another level after the injury. And for those, uh, you know, this chart is basically showing you how important it is to understand something called a mid-season lull and an off-season lull and what this chart really specifically shows you andy is how important the pre-hype draft cycle actually is and you're mm -hmm. going to see this with some other cards here in just a second but really what this chart is showing me andy as you see here through the mid-season lull it's important to keep in mind that just one game one game could launch you into the full-time lexicon and that's when that historic 525 yard performance against the Ravens began. Mm, exactly, Carter, because you can see, I mean, he wasn't playing bad. The Bengals weren't doing bad. They were actually winning some very competitive games. However, at the beginning of December, um, even going back throughout November, beginning of December, you could have potentially gotten one of those Joe Burrow based on his PSA 10 cards for around $50. Um, and then the historic game against the Ravens you know, where he goes out and proves a lot of doubters wrong in his talent uh, through for what, five touchdowns, uh, like 450, 500 yards, something crazy like that. You can see the big spike. That card actually jumped up to over $250 and then it kind of leveled out, but at a new normal kind of dip back down there the following couple weeks and, but stayed right under that $250 mark until the playoff run hit. And then we see the big spike as they get further into the playoffs, this card actually climbed back up to what it was when there was such a limited short supply of it. And so this just goes to show you that people, you know, talk about the cards coming back from PSA and how this increases the population count of these base cards. However, 
I will say that's true to a certain degree, but there's a large percentage of those cars coming back that are staying in people's collections that aren't actually being relisted. And there's also a, a large portion of those that aren't coming back as, as tens or even nines, just based on the, the condition that people kept them in. And I don't think that that's a, as big of an effect as these different factors that we see throughout the season. Cause you can see what the Super Bowl run did to this car that had uh, been in the marketplace for over a year and a half. And that would have been plenty of time for people to send the 1.1 draft picks based on risk rated rookie off to PSA and get it back um, to, to relist it in the marketplace. So it, theoretically, there should have been a higher supply. However, we still see this card going back up to a price point of where it was back in the 2021 draft hype cycle, which was arguably the hottest period for football cards thus far in the, in the modern sports card boom era. Man, I I love this chart so much. So once again, this is a base Donruss. His Prism cards actually did very similar stuff. So obviously mm -hmm. Prism PSA 10 is going to be more because, you know, it's the most coveted set. Um but I remember, you know, as far as because I know a lot of people are like, well, why aren't you doing the prism card? It was very similar because during this midseason law, Landy, you could get his prism PSA 10 for like 150 bucks leading into the Super Bowl. Those got up to seven hundred dollars. And the pop count on that is actually pretty high. So, yeah, you know, it's very important to note that for base PSA 10 and even PSA nines, the charts are going to be very similar to this with other cards and you'll see this with Cooper cup. So Andy, here are my major takeaways before we go to Cooper cup. The first is once again, understand that the pre-draft hype cycle is a very real thing in football cards. The second thing is even during the season, after those first four weeks, you can get really good cards during that mid season lull. Normally it's about like a month uh, from what we've seen over the past couple of years. And the third thing, Andy is the super bowl hype run-up is very real now once again that's only two teams that make it to the super bowl every year but what does that tell you that is the time to sell and andy you know this once again uh, if you're let's just say this is just your first time listening i'm a full-time lsu football youtuber i had a bunch of joe burrow cards but because of people like you andy and because of the resources that i understood about cards I sold a lot of my Joe Burrow cards uh, during the Super Bowl run-up because I figured it is hard to get back to the Super Bowl. It, it, and I, I, I kind of just cashed out there so I can have more money to buy a better Burrow. My goal is to get a Burrow rookie ticket auto and stash it away and give it to my kids uh, when I have them. Uh, that's my goal. So I had a bunch of Burrow-based cards, and this Burrow-based Donruss – which, you know, you could see during the midseason lull was selling around 50 or so bucks, uh, 100 bucks. I was selling, I sold my base Donruss for $75, Andy, raw, not PSA 10, raw during the Super Bowl run up. It just shows you how big that Super Bowl run up actually is, Andy. As, as uh, I'm ready to see this Cooper Cup chart, baby. And you're going to see the same thing as well here with uh, with Cooper Cup, who is someone I invested in uh, preseason, and it did really well for me. Uh, but you see, Andy, what we want to show you with this chart is how important fantasy performance can actually affect card prices. Absolutely, Carter, because the, the market has evolved. Um, and just one quick um, tidbit on, on your comment about the prism for Joe Burrow, it, it that chart did pretty much mirror the Donruss chart. However, with the release dates of Prism being around uh, January oh, in, yeah, in yeah. 2021, you miss a whole, his entire rookie season. So you would have missed that, that initial rookie hype and then that uh, post-injury dip because there was no Prism out yet. So that's why, ultimately, why we picked uh, that okay. Donruss. So I just want to throw that out there. Uh, and, and then looking at Cooper Cup, uh, his... Prism chart here, PSA 10 sold Prism chart. And I actually uh, filtered this one out with just buy it now transactions. Um, and, and so you can see the how the, the spikes on a weekly basis were driven based off that performance because this card was kind of up and down, pretty stagnant, around $150 coming into the season. However, when Cooper Cup, week two, number one, number one fancy wide receiver, we saw a little spike just from from the like a low low price of under hundred dollars, jumped up to around one hundred and fifty. Then we see it start climbing because week three finishes number three wide receiver, and then you go week four and five, 
and not really active, but the Rams were winning. So there was talks at that point of Matthew Stafford for MVP. So there was an appreciation in those values. Those are the those are really the only guys that I have seen that are immune to that midseason lull. It's the guys that are front runners for MVP consideration coming out of the gate in September leading into October. And they've got to keep that head of steam going or they will succumb to the midseason lull we see in November. Even Cooper Cup here, we can see these spikes like week six, week seven, both uh, top two, top number two in week six, number one in week seven. We see a little spike, but then it dips back down and you can see it goes almost back down to where it was in week two. You know, that's crazy. Yeah. It dips down in that around Thanksgiving time period there in November. But then we get to December. You can see week 13, number five finish. The Rams are arguably uh, at that point, you know, they're fighting neck and neck for the lead in the NFC West with San Francisco and uh, Cooper Cup, number five wide receiver in week 13. Still, that card has dipped down to around $100 based on all the other activity in the market based on the available supply at this point it's a it's a per, it's it's a perception that these cards are going down in value when in fact i think there's more supply and even players that are playing at this kind of level can dip down throughout the week only to then go back up you see what the playoff run does for this card heading into january absolutely astronomical uh, value increase heading into the playoff and then peak in the Super Bowl. So a few things about this chart. Okay. Once again, this is our first non quarterback chart right here. And one thing, let's just say you're new to the channel. Andy and I are huge on not just talking about quarterbacks. Okay. So we all know quarterbacks run the hobby. So, I mean, we don't have to go through the spiel again, but we are big believers in wide receiver cards. Uh, running back cards, we'll, we'll talk more about that down the road. We just did an episode on it a few episodes ago. But wide receiver cards are a different animal in and of itself, right? And what this chart to me shows, Andy, is Cooper Cup was the absolute best fantasy football player last year. There is no debate. You can make a small argument for Debo Samuel, but if Cooper Cup was on your team, especially if you did a snake draft where you drafted him, you probably won your fantasy league or you went deep and you see that Cooper cups fantasy performances actually did increase the value in his cards, but not the same kind of value compared to what a playoff and Super Bowl run can do for your cards. I think part of that Andy is that playoff games force you just to watch that one game. So Cooper cup, as a lot of people know, had one of the best playoff runs of any wide receiver in the history of the sport. So that goes to show you when the collective focus is just on those games, people want to go get their cards. Um, the second thing, though, Andy, is that even in the middle of a fantasy year, there were still some good times to buy some some Cooper Cup cards. Mm -hmm. So once again, you, you have to really pay attention to prices, buy when you get an absolutely good price. I know, Andy, this is going to sound insane, but I bought Cooper Cup PSA 10 cards in the offseason for $35. Now, I wish I would have held on to one of them. I cashed out pretty quickly once he started becoming Cooper Mother effing Cup during the year. But it goes to show you that if you really put the work in, you can get good values. And if a player goes on a Super Bowl run, you could really uh, 5X your, your money if you really get a good price. Yeah, and, and, and the fact that this was his fifth year also plays a role. If this was Cooper Cup's rookie season, we would have seen a dramatically different chart. Uh, like when you look at the Justin Jefferson chart, these type of uh, number one and number three finishes early in the season would have had a bigger spike effect because of that FOMO factor. However, this was Cooper Cup's fifth year, and it's like we need to see more strung together. We need to see the playoffs. We need to really see them put together – um, a dominant postseason performance to drive that that type of same demand that would be driven off of a one or two week performance from a rookie. So that's just another important observation that I've made from looking at this chart. Yeah, and then of course you know Jamar Chase, Justin Jefferson. All I got to say is good luck for you to get good price <laughs> on those guys. Okay, that's not my LSU bias. Once again, kind of like what I said about Joe Burrow. I, I, I'm a Jamar and, and, and Justin kind of guy, right? I want their cards. I mean, come on. 
but I don't have Jamar Justin kind of money. I don't, I'm not at that level just yet in my personal life. Uh, and the same thing for Joe as well. So once again, even someone like me who is a diehard fan of these guys, it's very important to do your price research so you don't burn through all your cash. And so now we get to another chart here. Yeah, yeah. The, the courtesy of VintageCardPrices.com. Um, just very nice evidence because some of these charts go back well before, you know, the sports card boom. And I think that's important. That's why I pulled up this Christian McCaffrey chart. You know, um, you saw Patrick Mahomes, the quarterbacks, the big quarterbacks take off first back going back to May of 2020. However, it took a little bit more time, but skill position players did catch on in a big way. And that's why I pulled this chart. Uh, Christian McCaffrey was arguably the most hyped up rookie card, skill position player, base prism, PSA 10, bases and silver from 2017. You know, that card got up to close to $1,000 at the beginning of September. However, he did not live up to those expectations, and that card continued to go down. This is an anomaly transaction you could rule out. Um, and those continue to go down to where they're at now in a at a new normal, you know, close to kind of where they started back off at, in the May of 2020 due to his injury struggles and just the Carolina Panthers in, in general. Um, so it's just a very interesting chart to say, okay, you know, what, what was that card at whenever the market was at its peak for that player versus what it's at now to get a better understanding of if that's a good decision to, to buy in or not? Yeah, and this goes back to running backs, right? As far as long-term holds, we love the running back position. We love running back cards, but we go back to this. LaDainian Tomlinson and Adrian Peterson cards are still so cheap compared to where they are in the echelon of the absolute best football players of all time. So once again, running backs, as far as long-term holds are concerned, got to be careful. You, I mean, you really, really do. So that that goes for going after Jonathan Taylor cards or uh, Alvin Kamara or, who, or whoever else. It's very important to, to understand that. We wish it wasn't like that, but it, it's just the situation. We, and Andy, you and I are both higher on wide receivers than we are running backs, and we've seen this, Andy, with some huge Christian McCaff uh, McCaffrey transactions. And I'm kind of surprised, Andy, as far as his market is concerned, it's still as hot as it is no knowing what his injury situation has been over the past couple of seasons. That, that is very true. I, I think it just goes to show you that there was a lot of people that bought in here that aren't willing to now settle for kind of pre-boom prices. Right. Um, and so they probably have got them listed. And that's why there, there actually has not been a transaction in a buy now format on his prism PSA 10 since the end, since December of 2021. So I think the prices have stayed elevated. It's like people aren't willing to budge. They believe that maybe he's got another year or two left in the tank and maybe that hype is going to come back for him. It's going to be hard because the Carolina Panthers are just in absolute turmoil right now in the quarterback position. Uh, Tom Brady's also come back and you know, the NFC South is now going to go through him. And that's the next chart we go to, Carter, because oh. this one is really important to look at. Yeah, so Tom Brady, obviously, you and I were talking about this privately. He is the Jordan of the hobby. He is the LeBron of the hobby. He's kind of his own little thing. And we get a lot of questions about Brady cards. And once again, we have our different opinions about which Brady cards are worth more. Um, but right here, you know, just this is iconic. You know, I got to hold this card in an LCS. I want this card. Obviously, a rookie ticket auto is unattainable for anyone not named Jeff Bezos right now. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, God, Andy, I just love this card. At some point, I want to get one. Yeah, oh, man, me too, man. I would. Uh, this this is a grill card, true chase card for me as well. Uh, and you can definitely see the initial sports card boom, how it affected Tom Brady almost immediately, as well as Patrick Mahomes. This April and May time period, we saw a huge increase in the value of the, those rookie cards, those premium rookie cards from these players. However, you still see Tom Brady here subject to the same midseason lull in 2020. You know, he didn't start off incredibly hot with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers at the beginning of 2020. And whenever that happens... If, if they don't come out of the gates, guns blazing, playing like they're going to be an MVP uh, con, uh, consideration going into October, 
those cards will inevitably decline. You could have bought in here November, December, even uh, Tom Brady cards in his Buccaneers uniform. This the same theories that we point out in these charts apply to their veteran cards if they're iconic. For example, I bought into Tom Brady's Red Cracked Ice uh, Tampa Bay Bucks cards, Prism cards here in December for $35. And those cards, like I just finally sold it for $200 because I accidentally had it listed. It's a whole other story. But <laughs> you can you can see what the Super Bowl run did to Tom Brady's Bowman rookie card. It, it shot it up from, you know, what about $1,000 to $4,000 due to that Super Bowl run. So 400% uh, percent increase there. Absolutely. And once again, if you get into football cards, everybody wants this card. They want to hold it. They you want this in in your PC. You want to be able to hand this down to to the kids because this one, th this card right here will just never lose value. The Bowman. It, it's just one of one of the top ten cards in our hobby. And you know that's part of it. This card is kind of its own thing as well within the whole Brady market tier. Rookie ticket auto obviously is always going to be you know the, the the biggest Brady card or just the biggest football card out there. Uh, but but this one is just such a beautiful, beautiful card. The the borders, everything. And once again, it let's just say you're new and you want to get into goat cards, be on the lookout for reprints, be on the lookout for fakes. There's a lot of dupes. We did have someone a part of our community, won't get too deep into it. He bought a goat card of a of a really vintage player. Andy, I, I know you know who we're talking about here. And he got duped. He, 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 it, it was fake. So mm -hmm. it sucks. So once again, be on the lookout for that. Be very careful whenever you're starting to get into these GOAT prices because they can get very expensive and it can hurt you emotionally, physically, because we're all putting so much work into to getting the uh, a GOAT card. Now, Andy, now that we've uh, done all of this, here's my guy right here. This is who I'm targeting. Peyton Manning is, is obviously Andy someone that you and I are both really high on when it comes to the hobby. Uh, Hall of Famer, top 10 player to ever play the game of football, any position. That might be a little controversial, but I believe it's true. Um, and I, I just I just believe that, that there's a good opportunity for you to get in on, on Manning before uh, people really begin to really appreciate what he did for the game of football. Uh, absolutely, Carter, because I think that at this point, Peyton Manning's more or less considered a vintage car. I, I, okay, some people classify vintage cards as being from the 50s, 60s, 70s, and, and early 80s. Um, I like to classify vintage cards of any player that's retired, right? And right. they're no longer subject to performance or injury ups and downs. Um, so you get a different idea of how their cards appreciate. And I think what's so interesting about this chart, Carter, is you can see how this card, this base Bowman rookie card of Peyton Manning, which is one of his most iconic cards, the same Bowman rookie card we just looked at from Tom Brady, just 1998 here. And this is in PSA 10 format. You can see how it went up at the beginning of the sports card boom into August. But then you see what happens right here, Carter. The NFL season starts. And all the attention shifts away from the retired players and onto the active players. And you can see how low this card got here in September of 2020 when all the other active <laughs> NFL players were incredibly hot in this time period. I love me some Peyton Manning, Andy. I can't believe he could have gotten that for 95. Bowman PSA 10. Are you kidding me? Uh, but you see here, February. Look at these look at these 2021 sales baby I love it Andy and that that was the postseason reflection time period you also typically in this time period of 2021 you had an influx of stimulus tax returns uh people the, the football season's over so people are now shifting their attentions back onto players that aren't playing and when you're all you're talking about is speculation players aren't playing People's uh, oftentimes, you know, will shift their focus to retired players, Hall of Famers, the greats of all time. And that's exactly what we see here. And we saw this trend up at the, er the beginning of 2021 through this what we call postseason reflection and draft hype cycle all the way here into March and April of 2021, close back up to a thousand dollars. And then we see it trickle back down here at the beginning of the 2021 season. This card got back down to 250. Now that's a 
a new normal that's higher than the hundred dollars it was at the beginning of 2020 season. But still, I I think right now three seven uh, we, we are seeing a little bit of a shift in in vintage cards right now. I think because of how much NFL news has been going on around active players, the the monster team changes of all these uber talented franchise players. I think this has kept the focus on active NFL players and not so much on these vintage guys, as I call them. And so we're seeing some pretty good prices right now, considering on uh, Peyton Manning's PSA 10 base Bowman right here. Yeah. And you know, I'm a big breeze guy. So, you know, I've been, I've been dipping my toes into some, some breeze action, but Manning is who I really want to focus on because here, here are my thoughts about Peyton Manning cards. So once again, he made that appearance at the Mint Collective. It's something that he is that lets you know that he acknowledges his importance in the hobby. So it lets him know that he is interested in football cards. Now, how much does that matter? Probably not a whole lot, but still, it shows you that this guy is is understanding of it, of his cards. The second thing as well, Andy. Okay, Josh Allen and Justin Herbert. Now, while we don't have their charts up. Andy, you've seen it. I've seen it. I kind of wanted myself to get into the Justin Herbert and Josh Allen hype. But their two cards right now, Andy, are going for insane prices. I mean, just consistently, every rookie ticket auto you see, it, it, it's, it's, it's going insane right now. So here's my thoughts. And this is just some random prediction here from just some schlub like me. Okay. Yes. There is a lot more excitement of buying current modern players because you are buying. It's kind of a gamble, right? You're you're predicting for them to go on that Super Bowl run and see that Super Bowl hype cycle. And I understand that a lot of people want to get in on that. It's a lot of fun. It's a rush. It's something for you to get involved with. But my issue with this, Andy, is that their prices are so high and you're going to see how hard it is to get into the Super Bowl in the AFC where people are going to get really frustrated because if you're buying a Josh Allen rookie ticket auto, Andy, for $2,000, you're wanting – and 2000 is a good price for it. You're wanting to, at the very least, Andy, sell it for 3000 or 4000 The only way that's going to happen, though, is if he actually makes the Super Bowl, as you've seen from the data, unless some major – change happens and then you're out two thousand dollars what if josh allen never goes to the super bowl right and that money could have gone towards buying peyton manning cards or drew Brees cards guys that already have cemented legacy so that's why i personally am really high on peyton manning in particular because i think people will say look all this speculation crap super bowls it's really volatile it's hard to get there let me go put my money into something that's a little bit safer as in one of the five best quarterbacks of all time. And we've seen here, Andy, uh, here's Josh Allen's PSA 10 prices before the season, $900 for a PSA 10. And I told you then, Andy, we had it up on this thing that that is insane to me. T nearly a grand for a card that has a relatively high pop. And now you see the uh, where we are now, uh, it's it's gone down, Andy. It's gone mm -hmm. down quite a bit. It, it has gone down quite a bit, and, and that's just the fact that his expectation, you can see from the 2020 season, those cards got up to over $1,000 in, in that postseason reflection. Actually, That was actually their 2020-2021 their playoff run, and then they lost, they got knocked out, um, and they dipped quite a bit. But then they went back up, look at that, right at draft time, got right back up to 1,200, that incredible draft hype cycle right there and then they kind of stayed there throughout the summer they kind of bounced around a little bit but more or less if you look at the average they stayed around a thousand dollars all the way to october when they really started to die because josh allen was somewhat falling out of MV mvp considerations they were struggling games here and there i'm sure one of these dips down super low was when they lost to the jacksville jaguars and Josh Allen was sacking Josh Allen and, and Josh yeah. Allen was throwing picks to Josh Allen. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. And then, and then, you know, the playoff run came and they went back up and it was like, people were like, I don't know. And you saw somebody really reach there if, if this was a legit transaction, but um, 
you know, you can see we're now, okay, they're, they're staying. So they're at around this new norm. And this is here in, in March. This is just a couple of days ago, over $500. But if you really think about it, they could get as low as, you know, a $200. Uh, they could get this low. It's probably not going to, but the chances of it getting past this would be a Super Bowl. He needs a Super Bowl now for this base prism PSA 10 to get back up to this po- over a thousand dollar type of price range and the chances of that happening are really tough especially in the afc (laughs) i mean the afc is just absolutely loaded with talent and and teams that have incredible defenses teams that probably have better defenses than the bills do at this point so so a few things here about josh in particular but more this is a more general topic so andy you and i and our patrons discuss this all the time base it has gone down now our base cards dead no right but once again base cards nine hundred dollars before the season now they're selling for five hundred dollars and the truth of the matter andy is and this is going to sound crazy but i want everyone to really listen in on this thing josh allen had the best two game playoff run we've ever seen like he played perfect They Mm -hmm. scored on every drive versus a Bill Belichick defense. Then his defense couldn't stop Patrick Mahomes for 13 seconds. So Josh Allen just had the absolute best playoff two-game performance I think I've ever seen. But he did lose. And it goes to show you how important it is to actually get to that Super Bowl and be a part of that two-week hype cycle. That was something Josh Allen, he could not have played better, Andy. So that goes to show you how, you know, sometimes it's not, you know, just performance-based. And that goes to show you those PSA 10s, just those base cards, not much rarity, you can run into major issues. And obviously we Uh focus mostly just on base cards. So that's why rarity, numbered, autographs, uh, patch cards, all those different things are very important. If you could get a national treasures or a flawless patch, again, that's really tough. Um, do that instead of just buying a couple of base cards because that might be a, a better opportunity for you to increase your value. And Andy, here we are looking at um, a rookie ticket auto with Josh Allen, which has kind of become one of the hottest cards in, in modern football. It absolutely has, Carter. Uh, we love the rookie ticket auto. We see this card routinely you know, selling for more than uh, than immaculate, than national treasure, than optic on card autos of, of equal scarcity and condition. Um, and that's because well, we talked about the factors of why. I mean, this card goes back to 98 when it was so iconic with Peyton Manning and Randy Moss and then Tom Brady. Um, and it just transcends those different generations. It captures that that rookie information. It's just, you, you know, when you're looking at a rookie ticket, it is like, a bona fide rookie card. This was autographed a lot of times on card autograph like this one here. And it's just one of those things of beauty, man. It's just a thing of beauty. And Josh Allen rookie ticket autos are routinely going for over three K as you can see right here, Andy, man. Uh, I, if he, if he does, if he does make a super bowl, he he's, that's going to be a five or $6,000 card. Once again, that's a big, it's a big if it, and, and that, that to me is its floor. People want that rookie ticket auto. And, you know, that's why someone like Kyler Murray, who we have pulled up here, is someone that's very interesting to me because the NFC has become significantly weaker. And if Kyler makes a Super Bowl run, uh, you, you better watch out for old Kyler, the 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 the, the little guy, baby. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, if Cliff Kingsbury can, uh, can actually put it together there with them and everything, they can execute. I, I, what's, what's amazing here, so this is his – Silver Prism autograph card is non serial numbered, but it's pretty scarce for 2019. Uh, look at the difference here between the PSA 10 average sale of 23, almost 2400, but then look at the average sale of the SGC 10, $830, and wow. the average sale of the BGS 9.5, 1700. I think there is tremendous value in SGC 10, Carter. It's just taking a, a little bit less time to, to catch on. Um, but I think there's tremendous value in the SGC 10 because in a lot of cases, they're, they're more, they have a little bit more scrutiny in their grading process. They've been known to be more strict on centering, which, uh, 
PSA has been known to be a little bit more lenient on. They have some PSA yeah. 10s that are a little bit off center, some a little whitening on the edges that people have noticed in PSA 10s that probably shouldn't have been, whereas SGC BGS would have caught those. They would have never given those cards 10s. That's kind of the consensus I hear in the hobby, Carter, and I think there's a lot of value in SGC 10s. I do too. Full disclosure, I don't own a single SGC card. I've grown to love their slabs. I've grown to love them. Turnaround times have been very consistent for them. Price points are also lower. Now, I do have to give PSA credit. They are opening back up $50 submissions, but you got to get very lucky to be in the lottery and all that stuff. SGC is just consistent. I, I give them a lot of credit, right? They're just hanging in there. And once again, this gets into grading more so than just the cards, Andy. At any day now, SGC could get bought out by Fanatics or someone like that. And we don't talk much like general speculation when it comes to that, but that is something that you have to factor in. SGC has been very transparent. We've gotten to even see behind the scenes of their grading process, and they've only grown and they've only been more consistent. So I agree with you, Andy. I, I do believe in the SGC future. I'm, in fact, looking at some Peyton Manning cards and SGC slabs. I almost bought one the other day. So it, it's 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 grown on me. Even though I don't own one, I've held their slabs before, and it's 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 very interesting. Yeah, and if you're a, if you're a um, a big card investor like this, and these are expensive cards, and you believe in Kyler Murray, now in fact it is is a really good time to buy. I mean, we're we're seeing numbers that are like numbers that were leading into the initial sports card boom for Kyler Murray. That's how down his market is right now. Um, and this is a good card, for example, because this card I routinely see maximize return on investment. Uh, in any given year, a prism silver autograph card, even not serial numbered. We've seen this card hang with the optic on card serial number cards, the national treasures, the immaculates and the rookie ticket autos. This card hangs in there because prism is in a lot of people's eyes viewed as king, the, the king set in the hobby. Yeah, uh, I, I agree with that. I, I love prism. I, I do. Um but we all yearn for the day that tops NFL cards are back, right? My main PC is Tyron Matthew. Uh, obviously, 2013, that was when tops was still tops uh, in the football card world. Freaking love it. Freaking love it. And, you know, obviously, the most famous example of this is Russell Wilson being a first year prism versus the tops card, which one's better, all that stuff. But, it, it, it is very interesting. So, Andy, thank you for doing all this research. We wanted, uh, you know, to show you a few things. Number one, going back to it, rare autograph stuff is, once again, more scarce. So you control the price points a little bit more than just base PSA 10, which this is going to sound kind of bad, but it's true. It's kind of a dime, or dozen, a dime a dozen, right? So keep that in mind. The second yeah. thing, and this is very important, is understanding the hype cycles. So once again, if you, you, you really want to go back, that was such a good piece of research right there on the Joe Burrow hype cycle. Because you got to see the full spectrum of what a football card can go through. You got to see the Super Bowl spike and, and all of that. So make sure you understand those hype cycles preseason, pre-Super Bowl, if that player is in the Super Bowl, and then – leading up to the NFL draft. So that is what we really wanted to hammer home. And Andy, let's shout out. Um, we, we get a lot. We, you get this question a lot in the football card Patreon. Um, I've also gotten a lot of questions about this on my own LSU YouTube channel when you made a, an appearance uh, because a lot of people, uh, and, and it's something else about the Super Bowl hype cycle, is when Joe Burrow made the Super Bowl, the amount of questions I started to get about football cards exponentially increased. So, one more thing about the Super Bowl hype cycle, and, and this is a, a little anecdotal, but I started getting more questions uh, because there were the, you know, the fifty thousand dollar national treasure sale of a Joe Burrow card. More more general people who aren't hobby people started to get involved during that Super Bowl hype cycle for that player. So keep that in mind because the demand just goes up because all the attention is just on uh that one player so once again andy th those are our big takeaways and man thank you for for putting that research in baby let's go i love it yeah man yeah it, it's so important to get a full understanding of where we came from where we're at now and where we're going so we can kind of predict like i'm telling you guys 
it that is the when when it comes to August September the best strategy in my opinion is to have your cards listed be ready to sell but be doing research on the guys that are coming out of the gate slow but yet still have a really good team likely to make a playoff push based on the schedules in November, December, that are going to make that late season push and that run into the playoffs and start investing in their cards. Or maybe they're a guy that gets injured in September, or maybe they're on, they're really good, but they're on a team that just stinks. You know, like we saw this with Deshaun Watson in uh, 2020 on the Texans. And he played so good, man, but his cards still went down October, November, just because the Texans stunk so bad. So the same thing could could happen. You know, I, I look at like uh, DJ Moore on the Carolina Panthers, you know, and October, November, when everybody's, you know, focused on the holidays upcoming and, and having to dedicate a lot of resources, time and money to that kind of stuff. Plus, you have a lot of weekly activity in, in football and a lot of the focus is shifted to the MVP front runners and the guys that are rookies that are breaking out for the first time in their careers that's the time to focus in more like bona fide, good resume type of players that are going to make that late season push or make a comeback. And after that season's over, people start getting excited about them again. And and so that's like the major takeaway, man. And you can really learn a lot from from looking at these charts. And I, I'm happy to be able to provide that, man. Yeah. So let's shout out uh, the patron, uh, the, the patron who asked that question. Wait, I forgot his name. Hoya Panther. Hoya Panther. Gotta love it. That's what we do. We answer patron questions. Uh, we we try to get to as many as we possibly can. And to go along with our hobby tip of the week, Andy, you got another patron question regarding selling cards. And all this patron basically asked was, why aren't my football cards selling? And sometimes, Andy, it's not about the card. It's about the seller. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. This is very important. I, I think that the quality of photographs that you have. I think that, uh, you know, the title that you put for your card is one thing. As long as you have the basic information, like the year, the player name, the set, you're okay. You know, eBay is going to take care of that search engine optimization. You fill out those criteria. Where you can differentiate yourself is in the photographs. Photographs are so important. Um, They can really set you apart and either make you look really legit or make you look like you're really shady and and you don't know what you're doing and potentially don't take good care of your cards and potentially aren't going to send the right card that's in the listing. Uh, so it's really important to use, you know, your own photographs and, and have them high quality, proper lighting. I would, I would not, I would avoid, I've routinely seen cards where guys are holding it on their lap or like on a, uh, on a bed sheet or, or, you know, like propped up on their dog or their cat, something like that those cards going undervalued and people not taking them as seriously. Uh, Even if they have a lot of feedback and 100% positive results, uh, there's something to be said about a high quality professional photo uh, that's your own, you know, and and of the listing. And make sure you take it, if it's a raw card that's not graded, make sure you take one outside of the case, whatever case you take a picture of it in. I like to do the one touch because that definitely you know, makes it pretty, shows you take good care of it. But then I always take it out and take another picture of it, just raw front and back. People get a really good look at it. And also understand, it. and I, I know I say this all the time, it's so much harder to sell a card than it is to buy a card. It just is. There's so many mistakes you can make as a seller. Uh, there was a big thing about, once again, a different sport. I saw this on Twitter, a big debate about, a big Tyrese Halliburton sale and there's like a little crease on the back end and the seller said it wasn't there when he sent it. And you, once again, returns happen, all those things. And that's why you got to take such crystal clear photos because a lot of people could say, well, uh, this crease didn't show because the light and all that stuff, it, 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 it could, that's why it's important to take those photos because, you know, buyers can see every last little blemish especially andy if it is a more expensive card now if it's just if you're selling like a lot of like 20 base uh dj more cards no one's gonna care because that's gonna be like a 15 dollars sale if that so it's a little bit different uh so keep that in mind now uh I, i got two quick little hobby tip of the weeks once again if you make a mistake just make sure that you own up to it and don't get mad at the 
the buyer or anything like that. Keep those frustrations to yourself. I got a Drew Brees uh, player worn uniform card here, Andy, and it, it was like a cheap little six dollar thing. But this is a year or two, so this is a rookie jersey in theory in this card. And this card I got was for six dollars. He sent me the wrong card. I was so excited to get the card. I opened it up. And it's a Javante Williams <laughs> rookie card, uh, which is a good card, but I, I, that's not the one that I wanted. Seller, he was new in the hobby, made a very, you know, just honorable mistake. He owned up to it. He sent it. And uh, trust me, Andy, we've made mistakes. Probably not that one. <laughs> I, I think I've always sent the right card to the right person. But if you do make a mistake such as that one, own up to it and just you know take care of business and that way you know it keeps everyone happy uh in the hobby so that goes a long way and my second hobby tip of the week won't go too deep into this today either is nfl nfts so there's a new nfl all day stuff that's out there look we'll talk about it some on here we are more into the physical card i like touching cards i like the the tactile response a, a card can give me NFTs, I like it. I, I got involved in NBA Top Shot. I like NFL all day in theory, but there are people that actually break this down really deeply, and they, they've talked about NFL all day in, into deep detail, and it's just something that, once again, I know it's always important to get into something early, Andy, and uh, be on the forefront of it and get in at the ground level, but – that's just not me. It's it's not me for now. I, I want to just focus just on physical football cards, but I, I I am, you know, vaguely interested and I will one day get involved with, with NFL all day and, and their services. Very cool. Very cool. That's very exciting, man. I can't wait to uh, hopefully get to be a part of that as well and take a much deeper dive into into uh, NFTs. And um, I've had a couple people reach out to me about it. And I'm definitely excited to do a couple videos on that and, and maybe buy a couple packs or buy a couple NFTs to see what uh, all the excitement's about. So I'm looking forward to the future of that. Carter, play of the week, man. Play Let's of the go. week, dude. I've been waiting for this moment, man. That's it, man. Well, so so you want to go first or you want or you want me to go first? It sounds like you're at the tip of your seat, Andy. Did I you, am, man. Well, I am go. because um, full transparency, I made a purchase, a rookie ticket auto of this player just a few days ago for what I believe was an absolute steal. And the guy accepted my offer and I had no idea. So, okay, I bought a 2017 rookie ticket auto, Chris Godwin for Carter. Guess how much I bought this for? I got to know. $30. $30, Carter. We're talking about a card that at its peak was seven hundred, several hundred dollars in a raw format going back to the big sports card boom in September of 2020. Now, right, it tore his ACL in week 15 at the end of the season. So he's potentially he's going to miss a few games coming into this 2022 season. But we got Tom Brady back. Tom Brady, apparently Jason Light thinks he's going to play beyond 2022. It's possible. The NFC uh, South is Tom Brady's division for the foreseeable future. Sorry, Carter and, and the Saints. But, um, you know, Chris Godwin last year was number four in red zone targets from Tom Brady. Number one in team pass plays per game with the Buccaneers, right? And Chris Godwin had over 1,000 yards. People are not going to be buying into his cards this offseason because of the injury, and there's just not going to be news around him. Um, and we know that Tom Brady's going to be making a playoff push. And he's just, it is one of those things. It's going to happen. I'm just going to happen, right? Uh, and so, with him having over a 20% target share, with him being a critical component in the red zone for Tom Brady, number four in red zone targets in the league last year, and that's with missing a few games. I absolutely love, love, and he's the, part of that 2017 rookie class that has incredible suite of products available. And getting a rookie ticket auto for 30 bucks, Carter? Ooh! Remember, okay, so 2017, we talked about a few 2017 cards today. Cooper Cup, Christian McCaffrey, Patrick Mahomes, really good set because all the rookie cards are 
Silvers. So it is, uh, I like that, man. Look at you, Andy. They're so cheap right now. Uh, PSA 10, uh, so Prism Silver, that base Prism from 2017 for Chris Godwin is under $100. I Look mean, just incredibly cheap. And, and one of my favorite uh, fantasy statistics for wide receivers to look at for guys that are explosive playmakers is yards after the catch. Chris Godwin was number three last year in the NFL at yards after catch. One more statistic for you there. I like it, it, man. That's crazy. The red zone targets with Mike Evans, Mr. Red Zone. That's pretty crazy. I wouldn't have guessed that his red zone target share would be that good. Um, also be on the lookout for my guy, Russell Gage. Now his rookie cards are a little bit different because, you know, the the the, the, the draft capital, but I'm really excited to see Russell Gage and Leonard Fournette back with Brady. I like I it. Just, I, I actually just bought myself a Russell Gage rookie ticket auto as well. <laughs> Look at you. Huh? Yeah, 30 I, bucks. And, and what's interesting is Russell Gage doesn't have the same uh, resume, professional resume. However, he does have very good descriptive PFF grades in his career at the Falcons, especially when Calvin Ridley has been out. Um, and so there's, it, there's, there is not a, it's not a roll of the dice that we signed Russell Gage. This was very much a Tom Brady driven decision. I'm convinced of that. And Russell Gage, I think is going to be a critical component, pr- probably the number two wide receiver in our offense while Chris Godwin misses time at the beginning of the season. So I really like Russell Gage to kind of break out in the Tampa Bay offense in September uh, specifically. Here's the thing that drives me crazy. Brady keeps recruiting all these LSU guys. <laughs> your, your LSU collection is about to be better than mine. I mean, <laughs> uh, uh, uh. <laughs> you already have my best Fournette card that I lost. In right, the but, but we won't get into that. Now, uh, here, here's my hobby tip of the week, okay? Once again, we like to talk – at this point, we like to tell you uh, – w- more often than not, our, our plays of the week aren't quarterbacks, right? Because we, we're all on a budget and quarterback, you know, that's where, you know, the money's made. I want to give you a quarterback that I'm buying right now and I'm looking into buying. And that's Jameis Winston. Look, I understand Alvin Kamara. The likelihood that he's not going to be available the first couple of weeks is very low. Uh, so that's obviously a stinker. And Michael Thomas, he is shaking off some cobwebs. But Jameis Winston's about to join a team with the best defense to me in the NFC. And the Saints, at their absolute peak, shut out Tom Brady on national TV, and their defensive coordinator is still going to be there in Dennis Allen. So I'm a believer in Jameis Winston just being a good quarterback and a weaker NFC. This is a team that still has Cameron Jordan and a bunch of really good pieces around them. And if Michael Thomas and Alan Kamara come back and they're even close to the levels that they were during those last couple of breeze years, the Saints are going to be a really talented team. And once again, I'm a Saints fan, but, you know, Jameis Winston rookie ticket autos, you can get one right now for under $200 in uh, a good BGS format. So I, I, I am a slight believer in Jameis coming back fully healthy with a chip on his shoulder. Uh, Sometimes it's good to get a jolt uh, of energy. And when the Saints are basically saying, we wanted Deshaun Watson instead of you, that does a humbling to a quarterback unlike anything else. And Jameis Mm -hmm. Winston has been humbled quite a bit in recent years. So I am a believer in Jameis Winston at his current price point. So, uh, I mean, I, I, I just, I just am. Now, once again, is he going to be a pro bowler? Doubt it. But all you got to do is win a few games as a quarterback, and people are going to want to get into you. So, uh, still, I, I am a believer in Jameis. And look, Andy, what, what are these prices at? The BGS nine five. Very, very low. This is a BGS nine pot five. We're talking uh, latest transaction was eighty three dollars back in December. There in the mid season low. Um, but I'm sure we could find some for sale listed that are in very good condition of his rookie ticket auto for less than 200 bucks, which, which is very good when you see the peak, the peak in August of 2021, when he was throwing three touchdowns to Marquez Callaway in preseason was at $1,500. Are you kidding me? 
No, 1, I'm dead serious. I'm dead serious. Even um, September of 2021, those were elevated. You see all these transactions, 500, 500, 750 in September of last year when they beat the Packers. Remember, they beat the Packers at the beginning of the season. It was like, holy crap, Aaron Rodgers is flopping and Jameis Winston looks like a next Saints franchise quarterback. You know, that's huge. And then they and then they fell off. But you could have made some serious profit. And 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 that, look, that's the thing with the rookie ticket autos. There's some serious scarcity and desirability around these cards. A quarterback like him, you know, he's coming off of a late season ACL tear. Well, not even late season, but like mid mid uh, two thirds of the way through. So um, there, there's plenty of time to get in, pick and choose your spots right now this off season around Jameis Winston. And and I mean, you could be in in for a big spike because I've already heard reports they're going to be putting uh, moving Taysom Hill to more of a tight end, a wide receiver type role this season. It's going to be wheels up for Jameis Winston, I think, in 2022 when he gets healthy. And and you can actually go look at some of the prices of Mariota as well going over to the Falcons. So if you can get it at a, at a good price, once again, there's really good upside for for those two cards in particular, those rookie ticket autos. And Andy, I'm going to say something very controversial here at the end. And and the reason why uh, I'm saving this for the end is because I want to reward people uh, that that listen and paid attention to all this good data you shared. There was one player that we did not pull up um, here with your with your chart, and that is our friend Justin Herbert. OK, mm-hmm. so here's here's what I'll say about Justin Herbert. OK, I, I did see him. Personally, and this wasn't publicized, he did something that really impressed me this offseason. Um, I, I saw him in Vegas taking his offensive line out to dinner, right? It, it wasn't publicized. It wasn't anything. I just happened to be at the restaurant where this happened, right? This guy does a lot for me off the field. He says and does all the right things. He's absolutely one of the biggest athletic freaks we've ever seen at quarterback. This guy has a cannon of an arm. And if you were just to list the most talented quarterback in the AFC West, you, I mean, as far as just raw ability is concerned, Herbert is every bit as talented as Patrick Mahomes, right? But mm-hmm. Patrick Mahomes is still Patrick Mahomes. And you add Russell Wilson, you add Derek Carr with, to me, the best set of weapons now in that division. What if the Chargers finish last and people are buying the cards that they're buying at the prices that they are right now, Andy. It's not that I hate Justin Herbert. It's that what's happening around him right now is absolutely insane. Russell Wilson, a Hall of Fame quarterback. Patrick Mahomes is already a Hall of Fame quarterback. Um, Derek Carr is no slouch. Once again, with the best weapons. And look, Andy, I know what a lot of people are going to say. Well, it's not just Justin Herbert, Carter. The the, the Chargers have their great weapons, and they they've built a more – championship level defense but guess what andy so have the broncos they add randy gregory so have the freaking uh raiders they add chandler jones in that division i i'm not saying the chargers are going to finish last they very well could finish first and look their roster is just as good as anyone else's you can even make the case that the chiefs have the worst overall roster in this division now with some of the pieces that they've lost but that's the thing. This division is too volatile for me right now, Andy, to buy Justin Herbert. Mm. His rookie ticket autos, his, some of his prices now are just absolutely insane for a quarterback who very well could finish last in the division. It's just too much variance. It's too much volatility for me right now uh, to go after Herbert uh, at the prices they are right now. Yeah, they're pretty steep looking at PSA 10 cards going right now for around 400 and now that is down from the from the ultimate high period where they were at 1200 uh back in april the draft hype cycle of last year however i mean this is like a new norm because this is a base card and i think this is a new norm a new uh, baseline for his card here around 400 dollars for the prison psa 10 and it's really gonna take Because of the increased availability, the increased supply of 2020 Prism cards, base cards, it's going to take something serious, either MVP consideration right out of the gate and they're winning, 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 which we know is going to be very difficult, even for all those reasons you just talked about, or a deep playoff run. And yeah, it's tough for me to buy in. I almost want to just wait. I've got to wait. I've got to wait. But if you see... If, if you see Herbert, like if they kind of stumble coming out of the blocks in September and they dip down into that 
probably $200 price range for his base Prism PSA 10, I would buy. Honestly, I would buy at that point because you know there's so much room for growth that they could very well make a final push and just kind of roll the dice. Not if, if not that, then he's got a lot more years obviously left in the tank and the, and the Chargers are set up you know, on his rookie contract to make a push at some point in the next few years. I mean, it's possible, right? Yeah, and, and and once again, I understand buying Herbert is not just a this year thing. You want to hold on to him to see how his career plays out. But that's the thing. You know, it's a lot easier to say that you're going to buy a quarterback and long-term hold him and not fire sale him. I'm telling you, a lot of people, Andy, you know this, they do this long-term hold justification kind of thing, and they get impatient and want to sell it and want to go buy whoever the next quarterback is or whatever. I'm just saying right now, man, uh, Herbert rookie ticket autos. I think, Andy, there's a lot more of them out there uh, as far as scarcity is concerned. There's so many different variations that look really good. Out of all the rookie ticket autos, I'm staying away from Herbert's more than anyone else just because of the division and the prices are just so insane. For And it's not just like his – like his out of 23 rookie ticket autos and his out of 99 rookie ticket autos. It's just normal rookie ticket autos. They're insane right now. Insane. You can see it on, on this chart right now. Yeah. It, it, it's, it's tough. It's tough for me to justify uh, doing that right now, even though I like him a lot. And I think at some point he will make a Super Bowl. But still, I, it's. Mm. I don't know, Andy. I just, I, ugh, I just can't. I, I, I just can't. It's too much. Yeah, when you're when they're going for around five grand, and it's like you got everything to kind of lose it, at that price point. You know, it becomes very hard to get someone to buy, you know, a card that that valuable um, when you could potentially right now invest in a Jameis Winston of same same or equal scarcity, or maybe even more scarce than than this in the same condition. For what well, I mean, a tenth of of the price. So, right. I mean, there, there's tremendous amount of upside and a very little downside compared to this, where it's little upside and a lot of potential downside if things don't go right. You know, I mean, that's mm. kind of what we're looking at. It's different than sports betting, right? I, I think the Chargers are a good uh, open bet. It, it once the Super Bowl odds come out for 2022 to put some money down on the Chargers. Um, because they're still going to overweight yeah. Kansas City. They're still going to overweight Las Vegas, the Broncos. I think that it's, you know, but that's that's different than putting uh, $50, $100 down for the Chargers to win the Super Bowl versus investing in thinking that this is a good long-term investment to to spend three, four grand on a rookie ticket auto of Justin Herbert. I'm not doing it. I'm, I'm, I'm just not doing it. Um, that's part of the reason why I'm holding off on, on Burrow rookie ticket autos for right now. There, I, I will say 2020 rookie ticket autos, there are so many variations, right? Be very yeah. careful. Some of them aren't on card autos as well. So be on the lookout for that. Obviously, the 2021 rookie ticket autos are piling out. Uh, but, Andy, we are, we are out of time. What we'll do next week, though, is I do want to take a look at the 2021 rookie ticket autos and get another week of data out on those because – they are starting to trickle out. I will say this. This was actually pretty big news. The Mac Jones one of one rookie ticket auto was pulled. I don't know if you saw that. Yeah. Oh, I, I missed I, that. I'll have to go check it out. Yeah, I, th I think Heroes for Sale uh, uh, posted something about that, our, our, our friend. Um, but, yeah, that's, that's crazy. I'm, I'm very interested to see what that goes for. I don't know what I would do with that. I, I would obviously sell it now. But I don't know if I would. Express to PSA, or I'd probably fly out to PSA to hand that card off. Did you uh, say Heroes of Sale pulled it? No, 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 no. He didn't pull it. Oh, uh, he covered he, it. He, he, just, he just covered it because he covers it. We everything. gotta get him on the show sometime. Yeah, I know he's he's big time. But the the, the point is, uh, I, I want to see what all the other rookie ticket autos are going to do. And there is one of those quarterbacks out of that cycle that I like more than all the rest at the current price point because there are some redemptions with that that 
are out there, and that gets a little tricky. So, Andy, once again, patreon.com slash football cards. It goes a long way to join the Patreon community, but more importantly, subscribe, ring the bell for this channel because we're obviously growing, man. And and the five-star reviews goes a long way with the, uh, the, the podcast and all that stuff. But, Andy, see you next week, baby. Yeah, man. Can't wait.